Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to take a look at the Magicka Dragon Knight Healer for Dragon Bones DLC. This is a dungeon build. I do have a written guide on my website if you want to go check it out. I have like more gear setups and what passives you need and all kind of stuff is listed there. Now when we look at our stats, a lot of resources, nice magic recovery and when we look, our spell damage is actually pretty high as well. We are running the Atronarch. Atronarch because you want a lot of magic recovery. Witch Mother's Potent Brew is our drink that we use. Also gives us more magic recovery, health and ma max magicka. Potions, we use spell power pots. In case you don't want to run those, you could run normal ones, but then you need to make sure to use Igneous weapons. To kind of make up for the spell damage buff. Up to you. Now in terms of race, what do I recommend? There is basically a few races that you can run. High Elf, Argonian, Breton. They all work pretty well. Now I chose to run a high health because 10% max magicka and more magicka recovery. But then again, like I said, it's flexible. Other than that, let's go to the gear setup. Like I said, on my website you can find a lot more good combinations that you can use. This is just one setup. Also, make sure to not forget to subscribe. I will post more videos in the future. Now here we have five form cult with five spell power cure it's more or less a standard setup spell power cure should always be on a healer because it gives so much spell damage to like your damage dealers and to yourself warm cult is nice if you have magicka setups because it reduces their magic ability cost by four percent now in terms of traits you want infused with tri a chance on the big pieces and divine magic on the small ones. And then on jewelry, spell damage, cost reduction, cost reduction. If you want, you also could run recovery, but it feels like it's better sustainable with two cost reduction than spell damage. But you also could run spell damage, cost reduction, magic recovery. It's up to you. Like I said, with if 2.2k magic recovery and battle roar, we have way than enough sustain. Weapons. Master restoration stuff, you get this from the Dragon's Arena. I also list where you can get all the gear on my website. Absorb magic enchantment. Nice power, increases your healing down by 9%. And then the set itself. The initial heal of Grand Healing restores 258 stamina to each friendly target effect. So that's actually pretty cool. Both useful for stamina and magicka. Magicka for blocking stamina in general to deal damage. Back bar. It doesn't matter. You don't need a Maelstrom stuff. What you need on the back bar is a shock stuff with a shock enchantment and charged trait. So we can apply co uh, Concussion and Off Balance. So when we look at this here, I pop this. Off Balance. Almost immediately procs. That means Concussion was on the target. Increasing damage by 8%. Then we have Concussion here. Another. When Concussion is there, Off Balance procs and then we get even more damage from this passive for your damage dealers, if they choose to run this. Also, if you use a heavy attack on an off-balanced enemy, you restore twice the resources. Champion points. 44 Warlord, 76-76. Keep in mind, 14% from here and another 30% increased return of resources from heavy attacks from your restoration stuff passive. 44, 76 and 73. Those two are the most important. This year, the others don't really matter much. 37, 13, 18 Master Dogs and 23 Tomater. 
81 ironclad very important a lot of damage is direct damage so you want to have a lot of points in here 13 spell shield 48 49 49 and here nothing now in terms of passives I mean you get nice spell resistance and then it's mostly here that is uh, really nice battle roar when you cast the ultimate you basically like this has 250 ulti points so you can kind of calculate 46 times 250 you'll get that much magic and stamina back it's a lot it's insane that's why sustaining on a dk is pretty easy then we also have this when we activate for example Igneus shield the group gets minor brutality increasing weapon damage and you also generate a little bit ultimate you also restore stamina it's another thing other than that make sure to have destruction stuff and restoration stuff passives light armor fighters major skill and undaunted your racial passives and medicinal use increase your potions duration very important Now on the front bar, and keep in mind, those skills are flexible. You can align them however you want. If you don't like a skill, swap it out. Healing Ward, a very nice... Like, when enemy is low on health, you activate this. <laughs> it really puts a huge shield on him. Very nice. You actually have time to heal back up again. And you really need to work with this. Because as you can see, DK doesn't have like any, like a heal like Breath of Life. So this can be really a lifesaver. Heal the dude again, stands in your healing springs. Combat Prayer applies a minor berserk to your group members, increasing their damage by 8%. Needs to be up all the time. Has an 8 second duration. Healing springs, this is your main healing ability. You want to use this a lot. Sometimes with Igneous Shield, sometimes not. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, you see, we really have no issues sustaining. You see, for each friend they target hit by the initial heal, up to a maximum of 3 targets. Restore 340 magic, because it's really nice. Doesn't cost a lot. In the light, this basically gives us 3k more max magicka. If you want to run another skill here, go for it. Igneous shield gives us a small shield, and on top of that, it provides us with major mending, increasing our healing down by 25%. So if you really want strong heals, you can like maybe use two healing springs, another thing, shield, more healing springs. Really keep this up. So you keep the extra 25% healing done. Light's champion only should be used in oh crap moments. You also can use the other morph. It doesn't really matter that much. You could also use any other ultimate that you want. But like I said, only use this if somebody really drops low. Otherwise, always use aggressive horn. You see, this is just better. 30 seconds we get 10% more max magicka, stamina and health and also we apply major force to our friendly players giving them 15% more critical damage for 10 seconds very strong ability that's why I always use this if possible now on this bar here you also can kind of choose what you want to run on this slot I use engulfing flames because it applies a dot to the enemy and especially if you have setups with you that have fire damage or that use fire damage and you see affected enemies take 10% more damage from all fire damage attacks so you boost your damage the group your group's damage even more blockade of storm like i explained earlier with the charged weapon enchant charged trait and this on the ground Concussion and off balanced will be applied almost immediately. And it also deals nice damage. Elemental Drain needs to be on the enemy all the time, reducing their spell resistance and applying minor magicka steel, increasing 
Like, it basically gives you 300 magic back every one second. This also counts for the healer, so when we have this on the target, I apply Elite Rain. Or, like, those two dots, they also help me restore Magicka. It's really nice. Energy Orb. Most healers highly underuse this skill. It's very important. As you see, when your friendly targets up activate the synergy, they gain 4k magic and stamina. This has a 20 second cooldown. So it really helps them sustaining. So make sure to use this every 15 to 20 seconds. Throw out 2, 3, 4 bubbles so people can activate it. And you see, it's, it's impossible to, to miss. And like I said, most healers don't use this enough. Then unrelenting grip. You could use this to chain in mobs. If you don't if you have a DK healer, he will use it. You can replace it with something else. But that's more or less the setup. There is a lot of good other skills. You basically also could use choking talons to reduce the damage, root enemies. It's there's a lot of good abilities. But I hope you kinda understood the base concept of DK healer and why I set it up this way. If you do have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. Make sure to not forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.